being that tax cut. And you remember when these tax cuts, you know, the, the fact that the commander of the tax cuts have been that as we ran surpluses, instead of spending more of it on government, which would have aggravated the problem we have now, he gave it back. And furthermore, the ability to have like no income tax on small business, that's been a big plus for the state. That's why we now have moved from, what was it, you know, 45, or, you know, down to the top 10 in terms of where I want to start a business. Uh, I do believe that we need lower income taxes. Um, and I do believe that these, these, that all taxes are not equal. The ones that are a drag on the economy, um, you know, those are the ones I'd like to lower. And those things, you know, like for example, it had some jukebox digital thing. I vetoed that today. Uh, no, we don't, we don't need to provide any more tax breaks. And like that oil and gas thing that I had a veto, come on. So we will have some tax reform in there. How much, how much we will happen? Why doesn't it happen? Well, you know, it's, it's like, uh, okay, yeah, I think that is better to lower the income tax, but by the way, don't affect my taxes. And, um, you know, I got a couple more years here. I have to work with a lot of people. Um, and uh, I'll have a heck of a lot more to say about all this uh, in about three years. <laughs> <laughs> and by the way, I've, I've written a book. Uh, it's in the hands of the publisher. I'm very excited about it. Um, and um, so it has a little bit of ways to go. Uh, it's about uh, the campaign, but it's really funny. It's, um, it has a whole lot of things that are tactical. You think of the campaign, of course, it has saddlebags. Inside the saddlebags are all these other things that I'm talking about that I've been able to observe over the last, um, over the last 30 years. I'll give you just one little example of this. Uh, is uh, in what we've seen in our country is a, what we call a narrow casting. So if I'm a conservative, I consume conservative television, conservative newspapers, and conservative talk radio. If I'm a liberal, I consume uh, liberal newspapers, uh, watch liberal television, and I read the Huffington Post, the liberal blog, or whatever. Tell me that, the Huffington Post, whatever you think. But, Okay, so then when I read that, I then become a narrow caster. And what I read and what I see and what I think is absolutely given to me every day. And by the way, I'm not interested in reading anything else. I, I, if, I'm, if I'm listening to conservative television, don't you be asking me to read the New York Times. And if I'm, you know, a liberal uh, consumer, don't ask me to read or to listen to Rush Limbaugh, okay? So where are we? Well, we're in our own silence. And then these people get elected, you see. And it used to be in the old days, this is a little observation I'm making, in the old days, you used to have what was called, uh, Randy, a safe district. You know what a safe district was? You know what that was? That's where you could afford to do all these things and you'd know, be the leader and, you know, let's just, let's get, let's have cooler heads and let's make good public policy. Well, today, you know what happens? You can't be, you, you're not in a safe district because you, if you're a Republican, you gotta look to your right, and if you're a Democrat, you gotta look to your left. So why, why is it that things don't get done? Because everybody's locked down. And there is a, there is a, there is a, if, at times, a fundamental intolerance for another point of view. Now how are you supposed to get people together? And then these folks, they live in fear that they're gonna be primary. Now that is not a good way to run a railroad, and that's why we basically have, you know, sort of stalemate and, and lockdown. And it's not, a, it's not a system that serves our, our nation very well. It's one little piece of the book.